back, relax, maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hi guys! So I am here today to do some single issue reviews of the first few single issues in a few different series. I have the first one of Toil and Trouble, the first two of Spider Gwen and the first one of Ms. Marvel. First off, I'm going to tell you about Spider-Gwen, which is by Latour. And I picked this up because I know a few people have been really enjoying Spider-Gwen recently and they have definitely said that it's a great entryway into some of the universe if you don't like superhero comics or you don't know where to begin because obviously this is part of the Marvel universe and Marvel is huge and has various different entry points and various different universes. If you don't want to get into Marvel by learning everything and sort of trying to absorb loads of knowledge all at once and you just want a small gateway in, then apparently Spider-Gwen is a good beginning. I would strongly disagree with this. I know nothing about the Spider-Verse, the Spider-Universe, whatever it's called. I don't know anything about it and reading these two convinced me that I definitely didn't know anything about it because even though it's issue one and issue two, the story is already begun. The first issue already has a previously and it tells you a little bit about what has already happened in the story and it's very odd. It didn't draw me in this book at all. It really confused me because I didn't have the background knowledge to understand it. It wasn't an a good entry point for me at all unfortunately. I just, I really did not like either the artwork which is just very very standard comic not really anything new, not really anything very colourful or nice, it's very lurid colours and the thing I don't like is that this has adverts as well which does irritate me beyond all belief. I just didn't get into this, it really, it basically follows the main character of Gwen Stacy who is Spider Gwen and you see her as she's sort of trying to fight against this eagle type character and you see her a little bit in the backstory as well you get to hear a little bit about her when she's Spider-Gwen and a little bit about her when she's Gwen Stacy and you sort of get to see how her two lives have sort of started to impact on the other and how she's finding it difficult to separate out the two lives but honestly it did not feel like a starting point this felt like a continuation of a story that was already ongoing which it probably is because there probably have been Spider-Gwen comics in the past or something like that or she's been involved in Spider-Man comics I don't know but honestly this just didn't help me at all in terms of getting into the universe. It confused me, it annoyed me, the artwork wasn't great, the story was dull, and I just wasn't a fan. And so I gave this a 1 out of 5 stars, unfortunately. I did then go on to the second one because I already had the second one and I was wondering, is it going to pick up? Is it going to all get explained? I don't know. So I then read through the second one, which as you can see has very very similar artwork. This one was even worse. <laughs> I just, I did not like this at all. We get this really, really weird pig character, spider pig, who comes into it and it just freaked me out. It was just creepy and the humour in these books is not even funny. Like, I don't know if it's a cultural thing but I just am not finding the humour in this funny at all. But I just, I'm not. <laughs> it just doesn't even slightly interest me or make it funny. It was just dull, it was boring, it was not anything new or original. It felt very much like a pow pow story, lots of fight scenes, lots of like antagonising but honestly not a lot of emotional involvement or emotional depth. So I couldn't connect with the main character. When she got into a fight scene I didn't care, when she came out of a fight scene I didn't care, when she was talking to a random spider pig I had no interest whatsoever, it just really was not for me. So I ended up just not even giving this any stars, like I rated it one star on Goodreads but it was just bad like I just did not care for it at all it just clearly was not my thing but I do know a lot of people who really do like the Spider-Gwen comics so <laughs> don't be completely put off by what I've said maybe it's one to try if you've already read Spider-Man and you have a bit more of an understanding whereas I definitely don't and I just did not get it so I will not be continuing on with this series unfortunately of course after that I was kind of scared to go into Ms Marvel because this is also a Marvel comic and I was worried that I was going to hate it just as much as I didn't like the other ones so I went into it with a little bit of terror, <laughs> slight terror over whether I was going to like it or not because so many people I know love this series and I was thinking oh gosh if it's as bad as Spider-Gwen then I don't know why people love it but luckily, luckily I went into this with very low expectations and was in fact actually very very pleased by how this was portrayed 
In this one we meet our main character, Kamala Khan, who is a Muslim, she's a young girl, and she basically lives in the US. And as you can see the artwork's a lot more pencil drawn, a lot lighter in colours, it's definitely more natural. And I really enjoyed the artwork in this one compared to the artwork in Spider-Gwen. I also, I mean it still has adverts, but I don't think they bothered me quite as much. Our main character has an obsession with the Avengers, she really loves them and she wants to be one. And we get to see her Muslim lifestyle and her cultures are kind of meaning that she's not getting to go out with her friends as much. And she really wants to. And so she sneaks out one night and, of course, things go a little bit different from what she expected. But I actually found that this one was a much better entry point. If you know nothing about the universe, this one works for an entry point because you don't have to know anything. It's an introduction of the character. It's an introduction of her story. And it really does work in terms of getting you into the story, emotionally connecting you to the story, and making you want to know what's going to happen next. Whereas the Spider-Gwen comics did not do that in any way for me. This one massively did. So I was very, very relieved to say that I actually did really enjoy this. And I'm very excited by the fact that I enjoyed it because it's one of the only superhero comics I actually want to continue with. And I've been intrigued enough to want to go out and buy the next one. So... I will be picking up the volumes because I think there are two volumes out and a third one coming out soon, I believe. Or maybe the first three are out, something like that. And so I will be picking up the volumes of this. I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. I would definitely say that if you don't have a clue about anything, then this is... Not if you don't have a clue about anything. If you don't know anything to do with Marvel, this is a great way in. And I really enjoyed it. So I'm very much looking forward to continuing on with this series and seeing how it all ties together and what our character becomes because I'm sure it'll be very very exciting. And then the final one that I want to talk to you guys about today is Toil and Trouble which is by Marigred Scott Kelly and Nicole Matthews. This is basically a retelling of Macbeth but it's actually told from the point of view of the witches as you guys can see. We have one, two, three. This was actually really good. I did not anticipate it being this good. I believe only one issue is out at the moment. I think it came out at the start of September-ish. The second one hopefully will be coming out next month. But I loved the artwork of this. I think the pirate-like warrior nomadic tribe vibe that we get with the witches is great. It's basically set at the time when Macbeth is coming over to fight MacDonald and they're basically going to fight each other to see who can take the throne and the witches, as you can see, have all these magical powers and they're very very cool to look at. I love, love, love the costuming on this. I thought it was so, so beautiful and the whole drawing style was just very, very stunning throughout. It's really whimsical, really magical and it definitely gave you that vibe of them being witches and them being native to Scotland. What I liked about this is it doesn't follow the conventional version of Macbeth at all, it definitely changes things and although we see hints of like toil and trouble and we do see some classic lines from the original by Shakespeare, it's not modern but it has some very very cool twists and it really interested me and I loved it from start to finish and I was really excited to continue on and then I found out that I would have to wait until next month to continue on because it's the only one out at the moment. But I did really love the art style and I love the story and I thought it was all very fascinating and so I'm definitely, definitely excited to get further through this series and see where it's all going and see what it's all heading up to because the ending was pretty dramatic and I really, really want to continue. I believe this is going to be a six part series so maybe it'll come out in a volume later but I'm gonna try possibly to pick up the single issues because yeah, I really like this one and I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars, so definitely would say this was my favourite of the lot and I would say that it's just really exciting, so check this one out if it interests you. If you guys are interested in any of the ones that I've mentioned, then definitely leave me comments letting me know down below. I would love to hear all of your thoughts if you've been reading them, if you haven't, what do you think about them. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all very soon in another video. Bye! Me and you gonna have a little chat about the